on my put on my watch. Um, hold on it. a sec. Hold on a second. <sighs> we will start from the beginning. And can I see me? What do I have to do to see me? I can't see me. Um, after you do it, yeah. When you do when you do your screen share, and I put the speaker view in, you should be able to see you. Uh, I'll okay. take care of it. Once you. Please. Share your Thank you. It's too. It's it's freaky enough. <laughs> so so hit share your screen and then I'll put it in. Wait a second. Uh, wait 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 wait. Let me. Let me go out of there. Let me go to here. Let me go to. Yeah, I got it. Hold on. <clears throat> okay. So if I share my screen, right? Mm -hmm. But that's, yes. I don't see my screen, huh? man. Hold on. Let me put up. Okay. Share. And there then, and then, yeah, wild, wild, wild. Now you'll be able to see you next to the screen. You see but yourself? I I, no, I don't. Oh, well, that's weird. I can see you well. Okay. So if you want to, take, you want to take breaks, just unshare for a minute, and then you'll. But you are no, on camera. No, no breaks. I just, you know, you you be you be. Um... Okay, I'm going to kick us off. Welcome everybody to tonight's Beauty Business Reset, uh, episode 48. Yeah. We have the pleasure of having our other admin in. Uh, Andrew is going to be speaking tonight about um, high performance uh, salon ownership. And Andrew is a certified high performance coach. And I think you're really going to enjoy this, especially with everything that's going on. And uh, if you need to pump up your energy and your focus again, this is really going to help you out. Andrew, all yours. Derek, sir, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, everyone, I imagine because you're here it's to see Derek, we love that. But, but really, um, you're already someone who's striving to be your best. We know, we know that. And and who isn't who isn't trying to gain greater uh, greater abundance, more joy? That's what life's about. Love, connection, boy oh boy, contributions in your life. But you know what? Sometimes getting to the next level is a difficult journey. Not not so easy. By the way, I want to pay um, particular uh, homage to um, Tina, who on Monday gave a spectacular, and Latina Black, who gave a spectacular uh, presentation. I really, it was very, very moving. And, and also on, on last Friday to our friend, uh, Mary Wilson, I believe it was Friday. Is that correct, Eric? Yeah, I think so. I can't hear you. Anyway, uh, on Friday, who really put us into a mood through the meditation process, that, that was terrific. Thank you, Mary, for, for that. So ba it basically, basically, we want to get to the next level of success. And, um, you know, it's hard because like all, you know, like me, like you, we've gotten our, our, into our own bad habits. We have, some, we have some fears, we have some judgments. And I know that um, all of you have dealt with difficulties. You really have dealt with, and it's particularly the last three months. We've all been this, in this together. And um, it's been tough. And I know that you're coming here night after night. It means that you're looking for uh, another edge. And when you get back to business, you want to, you're looking for the next level and you're looking for some strategies, some habits, some things that you can do on a daily, weekly basis to really transform what we'll call the, the quality of your life. So I'm really thrilled to be here with you guys tonight. Uh, and I love you. I love this group. And I'm thrilled to share with you what, what we've learned, what I've learned about the six secrets of the world, most successful people and who doesn't want to be a successful or even more successful person. And today we're gonna to talk about a few things. We're gonna talk about why most people fail. Because if we can figure 
that out. Think about this. We can figure that out. Obviously, we can get some success and momentum. And we're going to talk about the science. And there is science behind high performance. Uh, because reaching what we're going to talk about is long-term success. It's possible. And reaching long-term success where you actually take care of your health. And I heard from Derek tonight that, you know, our people who are going back to work are exhausted because it's been there and working in under those conditions. We really need optimal health. It's really, it's really important. And we'll talk about physiology. We'll talk about the physiology and how that affects our performance in a bit. And, <clears throat> you know, you can take care of your health and maintain positive relationships with people. And it's true. This is all about the art and science of, of uh, high performance. And, and, you know, I'm going to be sharing with you some of the habits. And I'll also share with you a study, the largest study that's been done on uh, high performance. I'll share with you what, what I've, I've learned. Uh, you know, and the good news is what we're going to talk about, there are strategies that you can, you can implement and there will be questions I'm going to ask of you to ask of yourselves tonight so that it can help you grow and help you, you know, uh, get more insight on how you can reach the next level without so much burnout, without so much frustration or challenge. And you're going to learn that right here tonight. And we're going to talk about, as I said, those uh, surprising results that I've had. I'm not here to brag with you guys about anything. Um, but I've learned along the road some things that I'd like to share with you. And I'd like to, you know, you may get some insight and some new ways to think about yourself and your own ability to get ahead. And I, I've learned some of these things and it's helped me a lot. So uh, I'm thrilled to have you here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down to what we call the six pillars of uh, high performance. So you know specifically where you need to focus on right now. I'm talking right now. And I'm going to give you a game plan. And then I'm also going to give you a little present for being here. It's a little gift from me to you. And I'm going to cheer you on along the way. So I'd like you to do yourself a favor. If you don't have a journal or, or a notepad or something, however you, however you take notes, I'd like you to, you know, Find a piece of paper, a pencil, we don't have to get complicated, and get ready to learn a lot about yourself and how you can finally break through to the next level. Because, folks, you and I know it's not always easy. It's not always easy. And so our quest tonight is to really ask ourselves this question. What do the world's highest performing, most successful, most fulfilled people do differently, differently. You know, clearly not a day goes by that you're not on Instagram and you don't see people's success or Facebook, you see people clear and they might have more wealth, they might have a, a better car, a better career, and you might know that they've achieved things a little bit beyond where we may be at, where you're at. And that's not saying anything negative. It's just that there's a lot of different levels of people in terms of their Achievements, accomplishments, wealth, their influence. And we're always in that mix because guess what? We are, uh, we are one of 7 billion people in this world. And guess what? Those 7 billion people, everyone is struggling. It's struggling. But what it is that those who, have, uh, who are at the top, the top 15%, you know, what the heck are they doing differently? So it's probably not necessarily where they came from and how lucky they are. And maybe some of them, you know, have different approaches to their life and career that generated a different quality of experience or a higher level of wealth, influence, and happiness. Our quest here is to find out today what it is, okay? So I'd like to talk about the fact, and this isn't easy to go to the next level. And you guys already know that. Otherwise, you'd already be there. You'd be at the highest level. You'd be the best that you could possibly be. But you're striving. We're all, we're all striving. We've all been striving together over the last three months. It's incredible. Has it been three months? I guess so. 
And uh, we realize that there's some things that, that get in the way. And these three things that I'm about to present to you, these are three big, big barriers. These are big debilitating problems. First problem we have, and my God, my God, this problem reared its ugly head hugely in this last week here in my city and maybe in your city and all over America and all over the world, right? We face things like fear and fear is a big deal. You know, we want to put ourselves out there more and more, right? We want to take that risk, don't we? We want to try that new business opportunity. We want to, want to hire new people. We want to go for it. We're going to ask someone. We want to seek an investment. We want support. But, you know, doing that, doing that requires that we show up consistently and courageously. And it's not always easy because why? We have a lot of stories in our head that don't support us. Sometimes we have things that happened to us in the past. I don't know about you, but uh, I've had stories that I keep telling myself that have prevented me from going forward. Ask yourself, have you had any of those stories? And sometimes in facing the unknown, we fail or fall back on the heels and we don't push as hard. We don't push as hard as we should or could as, as much as our team and our family and, and our loved ones really need us to because we're worried what will happen if we really go for it. We're worried what will happen if we fail or lose our reputation, so to speak, or we can't handle the struggle or we go through all the effort and it doesn't turn out well. You know those fears? And those are real concerns that we, people face daily. And I know, I know it's scary. And these have been really scary times. And it's scary when your back's against the wall. When you don't have the finances you need, it's really scary. I know it's scary when you have a ton of obligations and so many of you, so many of us have had those and we feel so stressed, don't we? And overwhelmed. And I know it's scary when you wake up to face a, a, you know, another day and you don't know how things are gonna turn out. My God, and I honor you, I really do, for coming here. I honor you for putting your businesses back on the road and doing what you have to do because it's scary, it's scary. You know, and, and it's also, this fear is a very real thing. And we've got to deal with that on an hourly, daily, weekly basis, no doubt. Thing is, high performers have, have figured out a way to deal with it. So we're gonna, I'm gonna talk to you about some things that you can do in your psychology that might help. And by the way, I'm not a shrink, I'm not a priest, I'm not a rabbi. I'm just a high performance coach who happens to have been working with salon owners his entire life. So really, you know, really, I, I'm, I'm gonna help you focus on making sure that you can show up more consistently as your most courageous self. That's the work that I do. And I know that um, it's necessary. And another huge debilitating problem we have is the one of fatigue. Fatigue. Mary gave a great, you know, uh, when, you, when you do the meditation, that's a fatigue buster. That's a way to get centered, okay? A lot of people, a lot of people burn a lot of fuel, a lot of people on their way up the mountain of success, right? They work super hard. They get a lot of momentum. They make it halfway up the mountain. What happens? They run out of steam. They run out. They just don't have enough energy to move up. They're feeling they can't make it through the day. Have you ever felt that? I have. I have. They're so stressed. They, you get irritable. Not just with your, yourself. You get irritable with your family. And when we're back to work, if we don't have, if we get fatigued, then we get irritable with our teams. And I'm glad people are not here tonight, actually, because they are fatigued. So they need to recover. Recovery time is essential. So, you know, when you don't feel like you have the mental alertness or the mental focus or literal, literally the mental, physical energy, 
okay? Sometimes it's like you didn't sleep well last night, and I don't know about you, but uh, particularly these last uh, few nights here in New York City, not sleeping well, hearing sirens throughout the night, it's, it's a little disturbing, okay? And we'll talk about this. We'll talk about how people don't care, take care of their temple, their physical body. And I found in this industry, unfortunately, unfortunately, because of the way we are, the way we work, there, there's too much obesity, I should say it. And, um, and, and it saddens me. It saddens me because when you have that, you get fatigued. I'm not saying you guys do. I'm, I, I'm sure you're, you're fit, all of you. And I'm sure you, you've cared about yourselves to, to the degree you're, you're, you know this stuff. But we're going to talk about this. High performance demands a lot of energy. But a lot of people aren't just physically fatigued and that blocks their energy. But, you know, just because they don't work out, but they don't have the right nourishment. But they're drained because when you're under stress for so long, or sometimes you don't have the momentum, you get frustrated. You, you envision something and you just not get getting going, you get frustrated. Or maybe they got a lot of what they wanted, but it brought them to a condition of overwhelm. I'm sure you all have felt uh, overwhelmed at times. And that, that proverbial from one of my juggling, how many of us are juggling? How many owners are continually moving one ball, moving the other ball, moving the three balls, and, a, and the tension of just keeping it up there. And inevitably, we drop one of the balls, and we're exhausted. And hey guys, if, if, Andrew, if, if any of the people in here right now, if this is you, let me see a number one in your post. If, you. If, you, if, you, yeah. if you're already taking care of your temple and your health, and you got the energy to get this done, post the number two up. Yeah, I can't see it, Derek. You're gonna to have to tell me. So we're getting a ton of number ones, obviously, yeah. um, because we all know that right now. I mean, I, I've been in that situation right now. You've been in that situation right now. Yeah. It, 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 you almost have to be a superhero right now not to be in that situation. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's so true. coming through. God bless you, rock stars. <laughs> Thank you all. We love you, really. You know, and, and over these la last few months, many of you, I know at times, I felt it beating my head against the wall, you know. <laughs> and, and many of you perhaps felt you're not experiencing the momentum. And the momentum's all been just opening my business again. And you deserve that. And you're doing a lot of things, all this preparation. Can you imagine all the energy we've expended? It has to be extremely frustrating. And then forces outside of us that we can't control, you know, the governor of New Jersey randomly, and I'm not going to get into that. But what that does is creates a lot of frustration. So, you know, we have to talk about this stuff. We have to talk about fear, fatigue, frustration. And I talk about that a lot as, as a certified uh, high performance coach. I deal with these issues on a day-to-day -day basis with people just like you, real people. It's my job to do that. That's my job. And that's why I'm doing this webinar for you. You know, I hope I can provide some insights to help you deal with these huge problems and help you get ahead because you deserve. So I celebrate you guys again for being here. I really, I really do. And I know there are, you know, not enough positive things in this world to talk about. And we can, there's a tsunami of negative and we have to remain positive. But, you know, we're gonna work through it. So I'd like to ask you, oops. Oh, I'd like to ask my machine how I can move my slides forward. I'm stuck there. Oh my God. Hold on. So, how do these folks do it? 
how do they overcome fear, fatigue, and implement the right strategies and habits to dramatically advance their lives, okay? And uh, again, take out your journal, because here we go. Here we go. And we're going to do some deep work here and um, going live with you. So, you know, and if you have any questions, Derek, please, please uh, let me know. If, if they have them, we'll deal with them. Um, you got it. Okay. And I'm going to take some questions at the end and, uh, you know, that's try to answer them to the best of my ability. And here we go. And no, no question is too dumb to ask or too stupid. So just ask yourself, I want you to ask yourself, you know, look, skepticism, skepticism is awful. Yeah, awesome, I should say, not awful. We have to be, we have to be skeptical. I want you to, but I want you to think about skepticism in a different way. I want to ask you, ask yourself the question, is this true or important in my life right now? The things I'm going to present to you. I want you to ask, what would happen if I really, really, really focused on this area? What's going to happen in my life? I want you to ask that, okay? And I want you to think beyond yourself and think about, imagine, how might improvement in these areas help me? Not only me, but my family, my team, my career, my mission, and my overall life goals, okay? Now, I can tell you absolutely positively that what I'm talking to you about tonight is not going to help a few types of people. So if you're one of these types of people, you might as well check out or check yourself out and ask yourself these questions because it's not gonna help someone I call the yaya -ya guy who knows everything, but doesn't have the discipline to truly implement with consistency and excellence. It won't help that person. It won't help that excuse guy. And I know we have many more women on this call so we can easily, I can easily say person, but it's, it's always the guys, right? It's always the guys who have the excuses. It's always the guys who don't have the discipline to truly implement with consistency and excellence. I know every woman on, on this call has, has it, but, or the fear guy, that person who won't try new things, who won't step into it. You know that person, you I hope, you're not that person. So I want you to think holistically. I want you to stay open to some new ways of getting ahead because while your current level of thinking and your current behavior got you this far, and it has, it's brought you this far, it's amazing. Going to a next level requires changing up the mindset. And we talked a lot about mindsets the last uh, three months. Is it three months, Derek, or two months? I can't, I can't remember. Actually, the third month now. Okay. So we're going to follow this process, and I asked you to do something. I asked you to trust this process, and let's see where we end up, okay? So what I want you to know, again, it's not going to help, help any of these guys. And, and there's an, I forgot about this guy. This is the I don't want to change guy. And that guy is trapped. And I'm sure we've all met those people along our journey, the I don't want to change guy, right? So let's get back to, let's get back to our quest here. Let's get back to it. What do the world's highest performers do differently than other people? What are those top 15%, the world's highest performing, most successful, most fulfilled people do differently? And I just, want to say that high performance is not necessarily, doesn't necessarily mean you're the richest person. There are high performing people in all walks of life, but they have same characteristics, okay? This is not about how do I get richer? This is, this is about how I live a more joyful, fulfilling, rewarding life. And if making money is part of that, when you're high performing, 
you're going to make it. It's a value. So what, what happens? Well, we'll start with what's not working. What doesn't work? Work hard, be passionate. I'm not saying that not working hard, <laughs> you got to work hard. You got to be passionate. Focusing on your strengths, yeah, you got to practice a lot, you got to be grateful, and you got to stick to it. But that's the stuff that we've done initially that's brought you to the point. Because I'm sure none of you have not worked hard. None of you are not passionate. None of you haven't focused on your strengths. None of you, especially great hairdressers, haven't practiced a lot. None of you aren't grateful and you've all stick, stuck to it through thick or thin. You have, you've come to this point. You're amazing. But, you know, how do you reach the next level of abundant success? How do you go there? How do you go there? Without, as we say, how do you go there without avoiding burnout and false obligations? And that's what I'm going to teach you today. And it's based upon what's, what's so interesting and so intriguing that this is based upon the largest study of high performers. So what I'm sharing with you, what I'm going to share with you, I'm not pulling out of the proverbial rear end here. No, this is, this is, based upon, and I'll give you some of the numbers, this is based upon what high performers actually do. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna go into that science of high performance. Now, there's a guy by the name of Brendan Bouchard. Some of you or many of you may know him. He's an influencer. He's um, a coach. He's a world, actually, he's the world's highest paid coach. Um, he's a coach to a few billionaires, Oprah Winfrey, all those, all those folks. And Brendan's been doing this work for over 20 years. And his curiosity uh, has led him to this place where he, he said, hey, you know, I want to figure out what it is, what it is that makes high performers different. And, and Look, he has all the credentials, best-selling author, CEO of the High Performance Institute, 10 million Facebook fans. I mean, that's, that's a lot of Facebook fans, 10 million. 200 million video views. I'd say he's an influencer and ranked one of the most influential leaders in personal growth. And this is really about personal and professional growth. And as I said before, He's, he's most highly paid, and he's probably the world's leading high-performance coach. And I'm sorry, that should not happen here. And the study began, Brendan said, you know, let's commission this study. And it began to answer these questions. Why do some individuals and teams succeed more quickly than others? And here's the key, sustain that success over the long term. Sustain that success. And of those who pull it off, why are some miserable and others happy on the journey? Why are some people who, you know, we look at who succeed, why they, they're miserable on their way and others are joyous and happy on the path. And then what motivates people to reach higher levels of success in the first place? And what kind of habits and you hear this word habits, that's the title of his book, The Six Habits, training and support help them continue to improve. Okay, so here's the deal. Here's how the, the High Performance Institute and the High Performance Institute is part of the University of Pennsylvania, which happens to be my, my alma mater, but that has nothing to do with this. They just happen to be there. And also UC is Santa Clara. Okay, they did, 1 million assessments. That's one with six zeros behind it. 
That's a lot of assessments. They did 300,000 studies of organizational employees. 1.6 million online students. These are global surveys. 2 million, they surveyed 2 million newsletter subscribers. 10 million Facebook. And they've had, you know, this is amazing. They structured one-on-one -on -one interviews. They did data analytics, academic literature review. This is all real. And if anyone wants the research, I will send you the research. It's fascinating. Coaching insights from over 3,000 high-performance coaching sessions and empirical results from training. Okay. And what they came up with was there are a hundred or more performance variables. But the research wanted to say, you know, what is deliberate, what's observable, what's malleable, meaning flexible, what's trainable, and what's effective across all domains. They asked themselves what habits are deliberate, observable, malleable, trainable, effective across all domains. And they came up with, they distilled through the 100 plus performance variables, six habits, six habits. And here they are. Seek clarity, generate energy, raise necessity, increase productivity. And I don't know how to go back, but increase productivity and, oh my gosh, raise necessity. Well, we're going to go through them all. And how they define high performance is to succeed beyond standard norms, to succeed consistently over the long term while maintaining, while maintaining your well-being and positive relationships. So what is high performance? It feels like full engagement. It feels like joy and confidence, which is a really important factor of high performers. It feels like those feelings that you get when you're performing at your absolute best. That's what high performance is. Some people call it in the zone, in the flow. I'm sure each one of you has felt that way at one time or maybe multiple times in your life. But can you imagine if you can feel that way kind of all the time? How incredible would that be? And it's, it is possible. It's the thing is, when we look at it, it's not strongly correlated with age, any gender, any nationality, intelligence, personality, strengths, creativity, none of that, years of experience or even money, you know, that's, it's not correlated with that. It's not about your strengths either. You can have all the strengths in the world, but without the right habits. And how many of you have heard stories of, you know, the great ball player who had incredible natural ability, but didn't train properly, didn't get into the habit. We've all heard about those people. We, the, the, in our industry, you've all run across natural talented hairdressers, I'm sure but they didn't do what they had to do. They didn't have the right habits in place. So they never developed. Tragedy, really. Tragedy, really. Here's the deal. High performers do not report working on their strengths any more than other people do. The question they ask is less often, who am I and what am I good at? And more often, and we've talked about this We've talked about this for nearly three months. What is required to be of service here? And how can I grow into that or lead others to deliver service? That's their focus. That's their focus. What is required to be of service here? So what? The real questions become, how did those folks get to be that way? How did they develop those habits, right? How do they develop those habits? And how do they keep growing and succeed at the long term? This is not about short term. 
because if it's that, then you, you burn out. You need the energy, you need the pace, you need all those things because success is over the long term. And we've all heard, you know, the, the one day wonder, is that, is that what it is? One day wonder, Derek? I, I can't remember. So I, when I got into this, and I'll share with you a little bit of why, um, I, I've gotten amazing results just for me personally and helping clients get amazing results too. A little bit about me. And I've, I've come here, this is the 48th session, and maybe some of you know my background. I, I grew up in this business and um, I grew up in a family business and we eventually expanded to seven countries. We had 12, uh, 1,250 salons. We had 10,000, no booth renters. We had 10,000 employees. And uh, we had concessionaires who weren't necessarily employees, but they were not necessarily booth renters. And while there were, there were there's my dad, the late Seymour and me, and my uncle Nat on the right, love my uncle Nat, he passed away, great man, my cousin David, and, and there were many more of us, that's just a shot of, when I say many more, there were about a dozen of us in the business doing all sorts of things. It was truly a family business. And I had the privilege and honor, and some of you folks may know some of these names, worked with Orbe, knew Orbe when he was a, an assistant. He happened to have been Garen's assistant. And Kenneth and Frederick and the late John louis David, late Kenneth too, and late Orbe, unfortunately. And, and I had the honor and privilege of working with these folks and they, they were high performers and we sold the business. And after we sold, sold the business and the reason we sold the business was that there was um, a family dispute. And in that family dispute, uh, it really was so painful because it didn't have to be that way. It did not have to be that way. And I had always valued my family first and foremost, and I love my family. And when it blew up, oh my gosh, it was, it was horrible. And I don't know about you, but families don't have to be that way. And we can be different. And it really made an impact on me. And I went out into the world and I worked for other companies in the business. And then I came across this guy called Michael Gerber, who um, some of you know, may know Michael Gerber, he wrote the seminal book, Why Most Small Businesses Don't Work and What to Do About It. And I went and I studied with Michael Gerber. And I studied for three years to learn how to be a business coach for small businesses. And Michael Gerber has the, he, he was, he's the guru there. And I studied and I brought that back to the, my clients and the salon industry systemic thinking and all that good stuff. And then one day, then one day, everything in my life changed. And that was the day this little baby in that little carriage was born. And that's my little granddaughter, Scotland. And oh my God, my world was rocked. That's her dad, my son, taking her away from the hospital and and uh, since that day, everything changed for me. And uh, that, that I, I wanted to, I said, you know, to myself, hey, what's really important? I want to leave a legacy. I want this young little baby to grow up in a world that is, is an amazing world. And I want to impact, I want to do my part and build uh, help people do their part and grow. And, and so somehow the birth of my granddaughter got me on this journey, the high performance journey. And that's kind of the mantra, live, love, and matter. That happens to be Brendan's mantra, but and I'll swipe it, that's mine too, in a way. 
live, love, and matter. There's Brendan. There's a training that we had. And there's me and Brendan when I got certified. And um, it, was, it, was, it was a great moment. He's a, he's a great man, great individual. So enough about me. The real questions here remain, how did those high performers get that way? Okay, how'd they develop those habits? How do they keep growing and how do they keep on succeeding? Okay, there are six pillars to high performance. These are the keys here, the pillars. The answer is to this, they sought breakthroughs. These folks always sought, sought training. They sought coaching. The world's highest performers all are looking for breakthroughs on how to be better, how to become their better selves. And they realize that they had to train no matter where they are in their careers, no matter where they are in their lives, they are always training. And everyone knows, and we've been on this, you need a coach, someone who can take a look and help you climb that mountain of success. And these are the six critical areas, what we'll call, as I said, the high performance pillars. And high performers, had, you've got to master these pillars. You've got, these are really important. So how do we get to mastering the pillars of high performance? The first, the first thing is psychology, okay? And <clears throat> psychology is how, how we think about things, how we think about things. So we have to master our thinking, don't we? We have to master what we'll call critical thinking. It's, it's really, it's, it's essential. It's essential. We have to master our physiology. That's important, you know. Uh, physiology, when we bring, when we combine physiology and psychology and psychology, I'll just go back to it for a second. We're asking ourselves questions like, am I living my truth? Am I living according to my highest and best selves? You know, are you living that? Ask yourself the question, are you being the best you can possibly be? Okay, what interpretations in your life are standing in your way? Okay, isn't it true that sometimes when we're thinking negatively, that stands in our way? Or, you know, when we have that self-talk, that's standing in our way. Isn't it true that how we look at fears, okay, how we, those fears can prevent us, real or imagined, those fears can prevent us from living our best lives, okay? And we talk about this psychology a lot in coaching. And I, when I work with people in the sessions, and I, as, again, I say I'm not a shrink. I just deep dive into how people are thinking and where their mindset, we always talk, and I've heard on and on, every, every coach here has talked about mindset. We, dig, we go deep into it. And one of the things I do is, you know, I identify, help people identify three words that they relate to, who three words that when they envision these words, bring up a picture of themselves as being their highest and best selves. And there's some tricks that we, we have. When I say tricks, they're, they're, they're techniques that we use so that you, when you're down for a moment, you can lift yourself up. You can lift yourself up. I help you envision the future. You know, that's psychology. We have to envision that future. We have to see the future. That's really important. The future for yourself, your values, your future life, and how you can get moving through your thoughts, how you can get established behaviors, and how you can get those feelings aligned and moving in the right direction. That's, that's psychology, that's one of the pillars. How you can define purpose and get moving towards that purpose. And as I said, there's also physiology. And the question here is, do I feel like I'm working at an extraordinary level of physical, of mental, of emotional and spiritual energy. That's why I, I loved Mary's work last week. And I, I really love Tina's 
work of this week when she was talking about the psychology. And she also talked about the physiology too. You know, and so if you break, ask yourself on a scale of one to 10, how's your energy? And rank yourself over the last six months. How about over the last three months? How about over the last three weeks? And how about your mental energy? Where's that at on a scale of one to 10? Because believe me, your mental energy is being impacted on by your physiological energy, your physical energy. Believe me. And if your mental energy is impacted, we can't think our clearest. We can't be our best, can we? Do you have that vibrancy? When you step back into your work, do you, are you going to step back with that vibrancy that you really need to lead? Do you have that pop that your team and yourself and your clients deserve? Are you going to be your shining best self physically? You know, and we, we, we drill down to areas. Are you sleeping? Boy, are you sleeping eight hours? Are you eating the right stuff? I mean, hairdressers, God bless everyone. Notorious, you know, grabbing this, grabbing that in the break room. Next client, we know that. We kind of, when it comes to physiology, we self-destruct. It's, it's, it's terrible. It's terrible. Something as basic as, do you, are you drinking enough water? Are we hydrating? That's, that's critical. So we, we dig down. Or you just, you know, really you're just going through motions. So big, big part of my job is to help you dig down and discover where you're at and then what we can do about it to move you up the chain, up the food chain here, so to speak. Then we talk about productivity. Okay. Are you doing, and the question is, and each one of us has really had a chance to explore this uh, over the last three months. Are we doing our life's work or are we doing just busy work? You know, I, I work with a lot of people who are really trying to work hard, right? Um, but maybe sometimes they're working hard at the wrong thing. And I'm not suggesting for a moment that you're not in the right place for you, you know? And um, yeah, they're good at tasks. They're good at checklists. I've seen a lot of people who are good at that stuff or to-do lists, but you know, maybe they're not on the right path. Uh, so the question we ask is, what's it gonna take to be, can I throw this challenge out five times? 10 times sounds a lot. 10 times, let's leave it at 10. 10 times your productivity based upon where you are. Because if you're on the path, on the right path, you can do it. If you're on the wrong path, you won't make it, you know? And, and we ask, we ask on productivity because productivity is a lot about clarity. It's clarity, remember one of the things that high performers have. They are really clear. So when you're clear, that removes, that removes a lot of barriers, a lot of distraction when you're clear. And that allows you to be uber productive. Okay? So, and, and I know we've had the, these last, God, these last 90 days have been, you know, focused on things that just to stay, to keep our businesses alive. And I applaud you on, on doing that and being able to be in a position to move and to reopen, that's great. But when we get in there and we start doing that, what are we gonna focus on next? And Derek always brings up, and he said it for night after night, guys, guys, you gotta focus on, you know, the you know, first wave, they're gonna come. They're gonna come. And then what? And then what? So you gotta, and I'll, my hat's off to you, Derek. Mm -hmm. I could do that because I got a haircut, but we got, we got, what are you, what are you going to focus on? What Andrew, you say? My, hat's, my hat is off to you because you're my performance coach. And one of the things uh, I, I knew it in the Marines, but you re reinstilled it was to, you know, kind of let all those little tasks not go away. They're there, but focus on the goals. And are those tasks helping me get towards that goal? 
Yeah. If they're not helping me get towards that goal, then they're, they're little tasks. They're not the most important thing in my day. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, we, we, and you need to have the energy and you need not to be bogged down and you need to see clearly. So clear. Don't make me, don't, don't make me jump up and down and clap with a smile on my face. <laughs> I won't, Derek. I won't. I won't. You know, really, really. Another area, high performers, you know, this, we have to master this stuff and it's the people stuff. And I know we've had challenges. Oh my God, and we've talked about it night after night. What if people are this way? And what are people, if people are that way and they want to come back to work and they don't want to come back to work and they're living in fear. We have to learn how to influence and persuade people at all levels. It's about persuasion. It's about influence. And there's a very specific way to do that. You know, we're not in the command and control game. We're not in the Marines. And even in the Marines, I am sure there, there was influence and persuasion going on. And it wasn't, you know, wasn't that someone had a gun to your head, go, you know, take, take the next hill. There, there was a lot of persuasion, a lot of influence, you know. And the question we want to ask is, can I persuade, can I influence people at the levels I need to have? Can I get the buy-in that I need to have? Can I persuade them? This, the whole thing about retail is about persuasion and about establishing habits. Hey, folks, let's wake up. You know, this is what it's about. Will they follow me? Will people, you know, our people are investing in us. They're investing their, when they come to work, they're investing their lives in us and in that business. That's huge. That's a real big investment. One third of their lives invested in your salon. Oh my God. You know, and sometimes we, you know, and, and I know we've gotten a lot of it, resistance, resistance. Maybe there's a new way to approach people when they're resistant, to help them and persuade them to, and this is not about manipulation. This is not about manipulation at all. We don't get into that. It's persuasion, you know, and maybe sometimes it's just someone has a need to talk something through with you. And persuasion is, is the same in business and in life, at home, et cetera. And, and it's a skill. And influence is a skill that you learn. And I'd love to be here for you guys and, and show you the way on that. I'd love to lead. And, you know, <sighs> path, purpose. They all, all those folks have purpose. I when my granddaughter was born, I developed a, a, it was amazing. It's just something, and I know you guys have it in you. Have you defined it? I'm clear as to the purpose that I live. And I hope you are too. I hope you are too, you know. And then there's presence. And presence is, is key, you know. And it's important. And you ask yourself, you ask yourself every day, how do, how do you determine your presence? Am I fully engaged? Am I showing up today before you do show up in your business and at home? Am I showing up as my absolute best, or my absolute highest performing best? And we do that when we've got purpose and we've got somebody else to serve. We do that when we move outside of ourselves and serve others. And I'm not talking in a servile way. I'm talking truly being of service, of truly, 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 truly helping people. You know, and this is, this is key. And I'm, I'm gonna ask each one of you what, to ask yourself the question, what would your life, what would your life feel like if I was more in the now, in the now, 
this whole COVID thing has scared the dickens out of so many people to live in the future. And that's not where we need to live. We need to live in the now so that we can march into the future strong. Because we don't know what the future is. We know what the present, is, the present is. And when we're not living in the now, when we're not present, we're kind of dead man walking. And that's sad. And so, you know, ask yourself, if you were more in the now, how would that feel? You know, how does it feel if you're trapped in, in some of the old stories of the past? Or if you've obsessed, and so many of us are obsessing, so many people, I'm not saying you, so many, so many people are obsessing uh, about what it's going to be tomorrow and that they're just, they're obsessed so much that they turn it in on themselves and they're not happy today. It's crazy stuff, crazy stuff. They're just not engaged. They're not engaged. And when you're not engaged, you don't feel that level of positive emotion and energy and you can't be your highest and best self. You can't smell those flowers. And there are many beautiful flowers to smell. And the truth is many people, many people haven't been able to smell those flowers in a long time. And I hope you're not one of them. But there are a lot of great ways that you can. And the truth is that you can manage your productivity. You can manage your psychology. You can manage your physiology. You can be more influential and be a better, we'll call it people person. You can manage your presence and you certainly can design your purpose. And so, you know, the question is how do you stay on, how do you stay on your path? You know, how do you dramatically improve? How do you, how do you improve in all these areas? As I said, psychology, ask yourself the question, am I living my truth? Do my thoughts, are my thoughts serving me? Are they empowering thoughts? Do I feel confidence and joy I wanted at this stage of my life? And life is short. We all know this. God, I spoke to a friend this morning who's down in Florida. And oh my God, he reminded me, he said, hey, you know, hey, I grew up with this guy. We've known one another since uh, we've been um, six years old. That's a long time. And he said, I said, how you doing? He said, I'm doing great. And then he, he said, you know, we don't have a long time to live. And I said, Stephen, I'm living, you know, I don't know about you, but I'm going to 120 at least. I'll take after Dan Sullivan at the strategic coach, 130 years old. Why not? Why not? We can envision that. And if we do the right things, why not? Why not? But life is short. Life is precious. We have to pay attention. As I said, what three words? Ask yourself, really define who you are as a person. Ask yourself, are you living these words congruently? And not just congruently, consistently. Two C's, congruent and consistent. Important, essential. Your physiology, do you feel that? Do you feel that physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual energy? Do you guys feel it? Ask yourself that. Are you sleeping? Are you doing all these things? Are you speaking with enough passion to generate the emotions and power you desire? And think about your staff meetings. Just think about that. Think about the individual meetings and the group meetings. Do you have that, do you have that energy that you portray your dream in, in, in an incredible way? People love that energy. Are you being productive? Are you doing your life's work or just your busy work? What would it take, again, ask yourself the question, five, to five times your productivity each week, and you can do it. That is possible. And I'm not saying, what, what I will say is if you're looking at productivity uh, behind the chair, I won't, I won't say that you can increase the productivity by five times. You'd be dead. 
okay? But can you increase your own personal productivity? Yeah. Can you increase your business when you're increasing your productivity each week? Yes. That's, that's an outcome. When you increase your productivity, when you increase your clarity, when you increase your focus, what happens is people get that, you're more decisive, you're clearer, people follow you, and everyone's productivity increases. It's amazing. And so you ask yourself, and I, I, I encourage each one of you to take a look. When we're going back to work, what major projects must you achieve in the next 90 days when after you open with absolute excellence? You don't have to answer now, but I'd like you to think about that. Because you know what? You're going to need to have the right mindset. You're going to need that physiology, et cetera, and you can't do it alone. You're going to need your people to help. You know, have you developed those skills, those people skills needed to serve and lead? Have you gotten those down? And that's a never ending, never ending process. Actually, Brendan today had a, uh, a call with his uh, certified people, two hours, just talking about what's going on and how we have to lead, how we have to serve. It's powerful, powerful stuff. Can you influence? Can you persuade people to believe in you, to buy from you, to follow you, to invest in you, to support you? Are you that role model that your family needs you to be? Are you living that way that is, you know, their picture of you? Is it positive? Is it loving? Do you give them the love they need? Because everyone needs to be loved. And we all know that. Are you showing up? Are you fully engaged? What? Are you avoiding? Everyone, write this down. What am I avoiding? Really take some time, think about this. What are you avoiding? Okay. And who needs me on my A game? Who needs me to show up that way today? So tomorrow, tomorrow, before you go to work or whatever you're going to do, ask yourself, who needs me on my A game? You write it down and check yourself out at the beginning of the day. Get into the now. Ask yourself, what would life feel like if I was more in the now? What would that be like? What would that feel like? What would that look like? And your purpose. How do I stay on my path? First, what is my path? And then, and each one of us has a unique, you know, I said there's 7 billion people in this world. Each one of us, though we're not very different in, in these areas, we all need the same stuff. Each one of us has a unique imprint on the world. And how do we stay on that path despite all the distractions? And how do we even know what that path really is? And when should I quit something? versus when should I stick with it? And there's a way to look at things. You know, when do we cut bait? When do we quit? Versus when do we stick with it? And this is a big question, I'm sure, that salon owners all around the country, maybe some of even you, when should I quit? Versus when should I stick with it? Huge issue, huge. And what makes me feel fully alive? You want to answer yourself the question to yourself, what makes me feel fully alive so I can give, so I can give? Critical. So what's your game plan? What's the next step for you? So how important are those six areas in your life? And I can tell you they are everything, right? They are. And what's your next step in improving in those areas? to take a five, to a seven, to a 10 in those areas. Because high performers are up at the 10, 
sure, they may slip to a nine, but they have all those, and this is scientifically, scientifically proven, they're at a 10 on a scale of one to 10. And we can find out together. So for you guys, what, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give something away and this is for you and, and you only. I'll spend 60 minutes with you and I'll dive into your goals and goals in each of these areas and we'll do more and we'll create a game plan for you. We'll do that. And if, but I have to ask you if, you know, I, only serious players here. You know, and I'm gonna say to you, if you're absolutely ready for the next level and you have people counting on you, then come and have a 60 minute chat with me because maybe it's time for you to seek someone like me, okay? Who can help elevate your performance. Ultimately, no one can, only you can do it, but um, my job is to help you. My job is to frame things for you. My job is to ask you questions that perhaps no one else asks you. Again, I'm not a shrink. And this is about forward movement, not looking at the past. This is about moving forward, taking action, moving the barriers, what's you know standing in your way, real or imagined. So if you wanna do this, just send me an email, andrew at andrewfinkelstein.com. Put in the subject, BBR strategy session. That's BBR strategy session. And what'll happen is I'll send you a strategy session questionnaire. You fill it out and send it back to me. And it's all automated, folks. Due to my brilliant friend, Derek. Thank you very much, Derek, with the tech. I appreciate that. And we'll set up an appointment and we'll spend 60 minutes together. And I wish everyone, whether you choose to do that or not, that's okay. Everything is okay. I'm here to serve you in any way I can. And um, I love you all, I, I really do. And um, I know that this kind of work has made the difference in the lives of thousands of people. And should we work together at some time in the future, it'll make a difference in your life. So, so thank you. It's been an honor to, to be here. Andrew, a lot, a lot of love coming in. Um, a lot of people get it. Um, everybody that's listening right now, uh, Andrew is my personal coach. Um, so, so what he's talking about is real. It works. It's helped me to help a lot of you that I coach and, and from, from, from a position of serving. Um, so Andrew's the real deal. Um, he's been around just, just a year or two. Around the block. <laughs> around, around the block. But um, I, I, I have to say that, that this work and this this program, as it were, because it is a program. This is this is not. Um, I'm not making this stuff up, guys. This is this is real stuff, and um, it's studied and uh, proven to work. This is proven to work, and it's a different twist on a different take, I should say, on leadership. And um, we don't, you know. Uh, the coaches here are fantastic, all of them. They're great coaches. They're great salon business coaches, whatever. Uh, personally, I know the business having owned, operated, you, you saw the whole thing. Um, but I, I've chosen to help the industry in a different way. And I want to help you. I want to help you. Any questions, Derek? Um, just, so just, you, can you see the screen now? So anybody have any questions for Andrew? Uh, what's, for the, what's the first question? Who has the courage to ask me a question? 
Come on, guys. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Everybody's just being very thankful right now, Andrew. Okay. That's it. So get, in one, get in this strategy session with Andrew and you, you yeah, will just be answered. You, all, you all know you'll what you have to do. So. You all know what you have to do if you want that. Andrew at andrewfinkelstein.com. I'll type it in here now. Right, put it up. Yep. You have a shorter name. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I knew. Sure. I knew there was trouble in my family when one of my cousins said, you know, he brought me into his office. I was a kid. And he said, uh, I think we ought to somebody change our said, last name. How hard, wait, somebody just posted, how hard is it to coach Derek? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Derek, Derek is, Derek is, he's a great pupil. He's a great student. And, and Derek, Derek is, has a flexible mindset. And Derek, Derek um, has incredible energy as you witness. I think Derek can pick up on that energy at times, even more so. And uh, Derek's amazing. And he's, you, he, he's, you are Derek. You and, are, and you are incredible. And, and, I, and look at what Derek's done. Look at what Derek's done. You know, and I, I, I didn't teach, I didn't coach Derek on, on the business, on how to be. And, and you know what, guys? Everyone needs a coach, as we've said. Everyone needs, and, and some, some people need right now for their condition, a business coach to help them figure it out. There are some very specific things that you need to figure out. And once you figure that out, once you have your systems and your structures in place, or even simultaneously, you, you really want to consider this kind of work. It will put you on a path that is just extraordinary. Like it's my life's work and I, I wanna see your lives work as brilliantly and boldly as they possibly can for you, your families, everyone who you come in touch with. I wanna see you light up and have that energy and have that courage. Definitely jump on, ju definitely jump in for a free session with Andrew. It will, even if it's just the one Yeah, session. I'm not selling, I, you know, I, I, look, do do what you yeah. want. I'm, I'm, I'm really, I, I really, I'm here to present. That's what the session is gonna be. And you'll get to you'll get to fill that out, and I'll take you and I'll ask you some questions. And and um, nothing. It is. It is yeah. some discovery. It's discovery. Yeah. Yeah. And we're here to we're here really to discover our best selves. And we're all leaders. Any other questions, uh, folks? A lot of people just reiterating thank you and yeah you're, that, you're that very amazing. welcome you're very welcome and a couple of people said they emailed you already that's good thank so you. okay get those sessions in. you'll you will enjoy them they will definitely be an eye-opener for you because they will be yeah. very in-depth versus what we're doing here we only have so much time here so yeah um, I appreciate everybody showing up tonight. Andrew, thank you so much thank you, for your insight. Um, we will be back on next Monday evening. So mm -hmm. everybody enjoy their uh, couple days and then the weekend, make sure you rest up to recharge that battery. Yeah, really recharge, battery. really recharge. Do Take it. Take care of yourself and um, we will see you all soon. Thanks folks. Thank you.